So let's talk about 10 beautiful, incredibly fascinating, but extremely rare guard dog breeds. Welcome back to the Fenrir Canine Show. If you are new here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviourist from FenrirDogTraining.com. I have an advanced diploma in canine behaviour and training, as well as a first class degree in education, because my passion and skill set isn't training your dog for you, but educating you on how to choose the right breed to become a high level canine leader that can then raise perfect canine companions yourself. And that is exactly what everything we do at Fenrir is designed to do. So if you are interested in joining this incredible community, make sure you you start by hitting that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell so you never miss a future upload, try not to trip over a route, and then you might as well hit the like button while you're here. So this is actually the third part in our top 10 series of extremely rare guard dog breeds that was only intended to be one video. But after we uploaded that first video, you guys seemed to really enjoy it, and you suggested a ton of different breeds that didn't quite make that first top 10. So we did a part two, and then after that video went up, again, you guys seemed to really enjoy it. So over on Instagram, which you can come and follow, followers at Fenrir Canine Leaders over there as well. We did a little poll as to whether you wanted to see a part three and the overwhelming majority of you were all over it and wanted to see this third part. But also we asked for your suggestions and your recommendations for which breeds should be in it and you guys have come through. So this part three is gonna be purely your guys' suggestions that you suggested over on Instagram and we're gonna have a ton of fun talking about 10 more extremely rare Guardian breeds. Now, before we dive into the breed at number 10, I want to give you a quick update because a lot of you guys have been asking for me to keep you updated about this and that is that my books for my online consultation and my online coaching are now completely open and they're available over on FenrirDogTraining.com. So whether that's a one-to-one -one consultation to help choose the perfect breed for you or you're looking for a consultation service to help with some behavior modification protocols or programs with your dog that you might be experiencing troubles with or you want some online coaching services to help you through a perfect puppy course to make sure that you get it absolutely perfect first time around our books are completely open for all of those services and again the link is in the description fenrirdogtraining.com so for all of you people that have been waiting i genuinely can't wait to meet you now the breed that we're going to have at number 10 which is a breed that like i say you guys suggested over on Instagram to be featured on this series is the Portuguese Mastiff. Now the Portuguese Mastiff is one of those Mastiff breeds that is incredibly rare and the Portuguese Mastiff, like many of those kind of names, is actually an easier kind of shorter name for their instead of their actual name, which I'm not even going to attempt to try and pronounce. My Portuguese is awful and I don't want to butcher it, but I'm going to throw it up on the screen now and you can make your attempt at reading that yourself because I don't want to be that guy. Check that out. You see that massive buzzard? I don't know if you can see it. Look at it, absolutely stunning. I wonder if he's trying to decide whether Sully would make for a good dinner or not. I don't know why, I absolutely love buzzards. It drives Rachel mad whenever we're driving through the countryside or out walking, I'm always like, oh look, buzzard, buzzard. And I remember when we used to have a little allotment and to get to the allotment, you had to go down this crazy country lane. And we were driving down the country lane and out of the hedgerow from the side, a buzzard came flying out. And I'm not joking, it was as close to me as where Sully is there, out in the front of our car. And we saw it fly down the country lane with a rabbit in its talons. And it was one of those incredible sights that I will never forget, not to the day I die. But back to the Portuguese Mastiff, because as the King of Waffle, I am the King of Waffling On and going off on tangents. There's two now, there's one over there and one over there fascinating anyway the portuguese mastiff the actual origins of the portuguese mastiff are very kind of uh, unagreed upon a lot of people think that they're descendants of the tibetan mastiff but there's no kind of actual proof and evidence about that they are a beautiful breed and what really makes them stand out is that their heads are huge and slightly different shaped from many of the mastiffs being almost bear like which is absolutely stunning but they are incredible guardians fearless watch and protection dogs everything that you would expect from that kind of incredible mastiff type breed that originates from south portugal so next up at number nine i want to talk about the alano espanol now i hope i did pronounce that one right or much more commonly known in places like here in the uk and over in america simply the spanish bulldog now this is an incredible dog fantastic kind of family watch and guardian breed but an extremely intense breed that is certainly not for inexperienced owners they're one of the few kind of boxer type breeds that is very often seen with cropped ears that's much more kind of commonly seen in some of the shepherd breeds or some of the mastiff type breeds like connie corsos 
So in countries where they allow that practice, that is something that really allows them to stand apart from a breed more like potentially an American Bulldog. But like I say, another stunning breed that you might want to look into, you might want to at least check out. Just because they're an insane dog breed just to look at and check some pictures out, they really are kind of one of a kind and definitely one of those kind of intimidating breeds that will send a shiver down your spine. So a fascinating breed, obviously you're probably able to guess where they originate from. And I don't want this video to be 40 minutes long, even though I could talk for hours on every Every single one of these breeds because I um, just love them all so much we will move on to number eight now the next breed that we're gonna take a nice little sit down in the shelter while we're out on our daily lockdown exercise in that right buddy you having fun is actually a breed that it's the first breed that's cropped up that I actually had never heard of so I'm gonna just kind of give you a very quick overview of the breed and again highlight it as a potential consideration for you to go and do a bit more research yourself but that is the Korean Jindo Where that dog off as there's people off in the distance. Should we do a recall under distraction? You ready? Sully! <whistles> Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. All the way in. Recall under distraction. Even when you think you've got it nailed, always be working on it. Good boy, Sully. Good boy. Good boy. Again, if you need any help, FenrirDogTraining.com. If you want a perfect companion that is under control under any situation, even if there's terriers playing over there, that is the place for me to go and help you. But we're going to talk about the Korean Jindo. Now, again, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, because now we're getting into some of these really obscure kind of rare breeds. Um, I apologise if I mispronounce them. Like I say, the Korean Jindo is one of the very few breeds that I've ever actually come across recently that I had never heard of. They are originally bred in, you guessed it, Korea, and they were bred more as a hunting dog than a watch and guard dog. But as is so often the case, there is very much a natural crossover between hunting and watching and guarding dogs especially because hunting dogs tend to be so utilitarian anyway and rarely are simply used for one purpose and oftentimes not only would they be used for hunting dogs but as natural watch and guard dogs anyway and um, the Korean Jindo from everything that I've read and researched since you guys made me aware of them says that that is exactly the case an extremely fearless loyal protection dog that is extremely utilitarian in a variety of different hunting roles as well as watching and guarding roles so they definitely do belong on this list of rare guard dogs and like I say, I'm always impressed when I come across a breed that isn't kind of a super rare hybrid breed. I'm like, okay, all right. Yeah, I've never heard of that one. But this one, I'm like, oh no, this is a legit breed I've never heard of, which always sends me down the rabbit holes of researching because... Um, I just love it. So yeah, definitely go and check out the Korean Jindo if that's something that you want to uh, kind of explore in more detail because they're a beautiful dog with a fascinating history and lineage. Now the next breed we're going to talk about is the Double Nose Tiger Hound and we'll get cracking back on the walk while we discuss these. Now this is a breed that I'm aware of and it's a breed that I've been fascinated in and obviously as soon as people see them for the first time or are made aware of them you can't not be fascinated and that's obviously because of the nose which we'll talk about a little bit more in a minute. But this breed originated in Bolivia and it is an an extremely rare breed around the world and is very rarely seen outside of Bolivia. They were originally bred to help people track down and hunt jaguars or jaguars if you're from America which a lot of the local people in Bolivia would call tigers hence the double-nosed tiger hound. Oh Sully is that necessary? I had no idea this was here. Sully guess what you're not coming in the house when we get home. You are now 100% staying in the garden for the rest of the day. So you can dry off. You're going to stink, man. Oh, look how dirty he is. Oh, Sully, no. That is disgraceful, mate. Look at them feet. Look at them feet. Don't come anywhere near me. Go on, off you go. <laughs> Absolutely crazy dog. I can't take him anywhere he finds it, no matter where we go. But back to the double-nosed tiger hound, and obviously we're going to discuss the nose, which is the main thing that people want to know about. Now, obviously, when people first bred them, they thought that that was actually either two noses, or that it was bred to help them have an extreme level of scent. And we know that dogs already have incredible olfactory senses and incredible uh, scent work anyway. But through a little bit more research, a lot of people, again, I'm not an expert in this field, but from the research I've done on the research that actual experts have done, they say that it doesn't actually offer any kind of additional capabilities in terms of the dog's scent ability. So even though it's incredible to look at, and that is what they were bred to do, which was to use their nose to scent and track large predators like jaguars, 
it doesn't actually make them any more efficient than say a bloodhound or a breed like that so it's nonetheless an extremely fascinating and an extremely rare breed that was well worth mentioning in this video so thank you to the person that sent that one in as a suggestion so next we're going to talk about the saint miguel cattle dog and again it's another breed that i'm not going to attempt to pronounce their proper portuguese name but we are going to try and hack through some of this more thick stuff are you happy buddy are you happy but the St. Miguel cattle dog is an absolutely fascinating working breed. Now, they are much more of a herding cattle breed, but don't let that put you off their kind of guarding and protection skills. Because even breeds like Rottweilers have long, kind of illustrious lineages with cattle herding. And like I say, those kind of utilitarian breeds often very much transition the best to guarding and protection work. And this is a breed that very much does that. What's fascinating about this breed is that they do have incredible temperaments and characteristics, but also they're a much smaller breed than a lot of those other ones weighing up to probably around 70 pounds so this would have made an excellent addition to my top 10 medium guard dog breeds and i probably should have made the effort to squeeze them in there somewhere but if you're looking for a protection dog a working guarding breed that has that kind of fascinating mastiff type brindle look that you're looking for but you don't want to breed as big as a connie corso or a bull mastiff then this breed might again definitely be one that's well worth checking out. So we're at number five and we're at the halfway mark and a breed that got suggested over on Instagram a ton and that is the Bully Cutter, the Bully Cooter. A lot of people call it the Pakistani Mastiff or the Punjab Mastiff. Um, obviously originates from over in the Pakistan region and is a Mastiff breed that is bred kind of with its sole purpose to be an incredibly fearless guardian and protection dog. Now unfortunately this dog has and still to this day is often used in a lot of different fighting and blood sports which does make them a breed that even though a lot of people because they're so fearless and the look that they come with and that sheer size and mass it's definitely not a breed that should be recommended to many people I think the breed as a whole still has a lot of work to do in terms of kind of like ironing out that temperament and I'd love to see breeders really step up and try and breed for temperament and go for a more consistent approach because like I say with those kind of lineages and especially with it happening so much still to this day uh, and with them being a new breed you are rolling the dice a little bit in terms of what kind of temperament and characteristics you're going to get so i'm going to try and get through here without either a dicing my leg to pieces on these fawns or b tripping over oh no that was a mistake this was a mistake i instantly regret this decision this was a mistake no 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 oh no oh man oh i'm such an idiot I am such an idiot. Now the question is, do I attempt to go back or do I push on ahead and try and get round? And I'm caught in the tree, my bag's caught in a tree and there's fawns in my head. This is a disaster, oh no. Oh, you're not bothered, are you? Sully, can you help me please? Carry me, Sully, carry me or run off. Cheers, bro. Right, well, I made it out and that definitely was not worth it. But the next breed we're going to talk about as I kind of let my adrenaline settle down from that near-death experience that I just, it's like climbing Everest, that was. You know what I mean? Fearless mountain climbing me. I'm such an idiot. But anyway, the Persian Sarabai Mastiff is the next breed that I want to talk about. Now, again, this is a breed that I've done extensive research into. It's a breed that fascinates me, but it's one of the very few Mastiff breeds I don't actually have any personal experience of working with. And as someone that kind of specializes in large, powerful garden breeds, and then in particular, the Mastiffs, it's a breed that I would absolutely love to work with. They're very rare. They're kind of, they originate from the Northern Iran territories and they were used to be absolutely fearless protection and guarding breeds and it's a trait that is completely evident in the breed and a breed that again because of those skill set and those traits they're a working dog they're not very I would be very reluctant to ever recommend them as a pet it's not what they're used for but if you're looking for a protection dog on large bits of land maybe in those kind of climates thinking like Turkish Kangal, for example, Caucasian Shepherd, Central Asian Shepherd, it would fit nicely into that kind of category. And it is huge, can easily top around the 200 pound mark. So again, a massive dog, a dog not to be taken lightly, but whenever that happens, if it's a dog that I say that, naturally kind of makes it fascinating, doesn't it? So again, if you want to learn more, you want more information, the Persian Mastiff, go and check it out, fascinating. Now a breed that I'm going to put in the number three spot, and remember these aren't really in any particular order, I'm just kind of rattling off 10 
10 rare guard dog breeds, but it's the Hovervort, which is, I presume, how you pronounce it, because it is another breed that originates from Germany. And again, it's a breed that I don't have any personal experience with, but it's a breed that I've researched at length. And to be honest, I've made a complete mistake on this channel of not featuring them enough before, because they are a breed that 100% should be far more popular than they are. They're a breed, like I say, they originate from Germany, so you can kind of put them straight away with their protection and guarding skills of your Rottweilers, your Dobermans, your German Shepherds. They're very similar for me, like German Shepherds combined with a golden retriever-esque nature so if you're looking again for a guardian breed that is guarding is protecting has that as an innate trait that you don't necessarily have to train but you do want a dog that's extremely trainable but is also extremely friendly good with kids good with your family quite active so again the best analogy i can use is your german shepherd and your golden retriever put those two breeds together and this is the kind of breed that you're going to look at as a result that isn't how they came about by the way and again i could talk for hours and i don't want this video to go on so i won't go into the details of the origins but again if it's a breed that you're interested in and you don't want that kind of intimidating look which is something that i'm starting to come around to with my experience of having these large powerful breeds especially all the years i had my bull mastiff it does get a bit frustrating when you're just trying to go for a nice walk and people want to cross over the road or or they judge me because of my dog now i know i'm i'm a six foot three guy 300 pounds massive beard and crazy hair with a big bull mastiff and mastiff breeds I, i'm aware i'm not stupid i know how that looks but there is a part of me that's a bit like i'm also a really nice guy and i'd like to say hello and stop and chat my dog's far better behaved than yours is um, and that can be frustrating and i know a lot of people share that kind of mindset which is why the rhodesian ridgebacks your giant schnauzers those kind of breeds are becoming so popular in the guarding and protection world especially for family guardians and this is a breed that i think will drop in beautifully within that category and is definitely 100 percent a breed I'm going to feature more on this channel because they deserve that kind of limelight shined on them more than they get. A breed we're going to talk about in the number two spot while we huff back up this Everest-like mountain. It's definitely not a mountain. It's a, it's a tiny little hill, but it feels like a mountain to me. But anyway, is the Dogo Sardo. Now, this is an Italian livestock protection breed that originated from... Um, sardinia and even though they originated in sardinia and in, around those kind of italian ranges they're actually much more better known outside of italy these days they're still a very rare breed but it's a breed that's absolutely fascinating like i say they're a livestock protection dog which inherently makes them excellent natural watch and guardian breeds they also have a truly distinctive unique look which again like i say if you're in kind of a maybe a similar position to me where you've kind of got the time the skill set and experience to dedicate to kind of a vast variety of dogs you're not kind of pigeonholed into any one dog in particular it would be normal for people to maybe be drawn to these kind of unique rare breeds so that is the situation and that's the situation you're finding yourself in and you've got a lot of experience you've got a lot of time on your hands you really want to dedicate it to really sinking your teeth into training one of these quite intense guarding breeds then this might be a breed for you if you, especially if you're looking for something that's on more of the rare unique spectrum and last but certainly not not least the breed that we're going to feature in the number one spot today is a breed that i don't talk about much but it keeps coming up especially as you guys keep suggesting that you think it would be an excellent fit for my next garden breed because if you didn't know we are starting to get into a place where we're considering bringing a new family guardian into our life after our connie corso puppy passed away earlier in the year and a breed that keeps cropping up when we're interested in your guys opinion and advice is the broholmer now the broholmer or very commonly known as the danish mastiff is a mastiff that originated from you get it Denmark it's a fascinating breed it's a breed that kind of epitomizes a lot of the fantastic uh, mastiff like qualities and the only reason I don't feature them more is just simply because they're quite rare and I'm naturally kind of drawn towards the dogs that I've worked with more which tends to be your Connie Corsos your bull mastiffs and your English mastiffs as being based in the UK those breeds are just much more popular here but it's definitely a fantastic dog breed it's definitely a breed I'm gonna look at more and it's a breed that as we come out of this lockdown period period that the globe is in at the minute it's a breed that i'm going to try and research some breeders and go and spend a little bit more one-to-one -one time so i can really assess exactly what the breed is like so there's 10 more incredibly rare guard dog breeds i really enjoyed it i'm open to doing a part four because there's definitely 10 more breeds we could feature and i guarantee there'd be some on there that you've probably not heard of so if you're interested in that come over and follow us on instagram we'll put another one of those stories up and you can vote on it if you don't want to see another one genuinely i don't mind it won't hurt my feelings 
I want to make the videos that you want to see. So if you want to see a part four, come and vote yes. If you don't want to see a part four and you've had enough of these rare guard dog breeds, come over and vote no. Whatever gets the majority, I'll do because I want to make the videos that you guys enjoy and want to watch. So thank you so much for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe, notification bell if you are new here. And I can't wait to see you on the next episode of the Fenrir Canine Show.